One of the reasons I love the stock market is because it really gets down to the core of what I think life is all about, making as much money as humanly possible with complete disregard to everything else. Now, while I'm sure philosophers might eventually be able to come up with a reason why this could be bad, one reason why it's good is because it rewards business models that work, punishes ones that fail, and encourages competition within an industry, which often leads itself to innovation and getting customers better products. As an example, take a look at the craft beverage industry. It used to just be big companies like Nestle selling tap water at a huge markup, but now we have Belle Delphine. So while the stock market either goes up or it goes down, the ways you can lose money on it are nearly endless. So you notice that different types of people like to trade in different ways, depending on how they are in real life. First of all, we of course have the investor. This is your classic older guy who knows a thing or two about the stock market, like literally one or two things. And those two things are time in the market beats timing the market and dollar cost averaging. If they had to get a tattoo, it would say, buy the dip, but they would never do that because tattoos are a sin. Next, we have the boys of Wall Street bets. These are your Zoomer and millennial DGENs looking to get rich or take physical delivery of 50,000 barrels of crude oil trying. They trade almost exclusively options, which typically results in them making several times their original buy-in in a matter of days or straight up losing it all. They figure that they're only gambling with their future, so nothing to lose anyway. Their trading strategy consists of don't fuck with the mouse, and getting to a stock after it's already gone up 20% in the last three days. Another subset of options traders is Theta Gang, a community based around selling the contracts to the previous group. Their profits are consistent, but low enough that no one really cares. Their primary gains being the feeling of intellectual superiority when using terms like Iron Condor, Calendar Spread, IV Crush, and Gamma Hedging. Next, we have your Silver Bugs and Gold Bugs. These are the guys looking to keep their money safe. So safe that once some guy in Africa digs it out of the earth and sends it over, they dig a hole in their backyard and put it right back in. This investor is most often associated with the prepper community, who are anticipating the coming apocalypse and have their shotgun shells and seed collections ready to go in their underground bunker. Not all gold bugs are this extreme, however, as my dad would simply describe himself as waiting for the great undoing of the world financial system and the collapse of American empire. Very similar to your gold bugs, you have the people who are into cryptocurrency. These guys are similar in disposition, but generally younger and less doomer. They don't keep gold or silver in a vault in their basement because that's where they live, kept warm by enough GPUs to melt Greenland. They're absolutely loaded, but never buy anything because if they sold Bitcoin for US dollars, that would imply Bitcoin isn't a real currency. Penny stock speculators. If options trading is the casino, then penny stocks are the scratch offs. If there's the wolves of Wall Street, these are the sheep. And you might be thinking, what? No, I'm not a sheep. But like, bro, it's in the movie. Like, literally, that's what the movie's about. If someone posted a thread on Aerotine with a few rocket emojis, you know you'd put down 3K in an instant. Quants. These are the MIT graduates with three PhDs who work with 20 other math geniuses on a specific machine learning algorithm in order to front run the quartz crystal in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange's internal 24-hour clock by running a fiber optic cable that's 14 feet shorter than the closest competitor, thereby reducing the distance light has to travel so we can arbitrage a quarter of a cent profit per bushel on soybean futures. He makes 500k a year, but secretly dreams of owning an acreage and holding a soybean in the flesh. The security analysts. These guys are the very detail-oriented investors who are always out to find a good deal on an undervalued stock. Their biggest weakness is not being able to bring themselves to buy Apple, even though it's outperformed their entire portfolio for the past 10 years. Of course, we can't forget, last but not least, Wall Street. This is your investment banks, hedge funds, and money managers. Big money, smart money, whatever you want to call it. Now, what most people think Wall Street does is this. Hmm, looks like Daryl from New Hampshire just bought 15K worth of Delta Airlines. Hmm, oopsie daisy. But what they actually do is this. Bring, 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 bring. Hi, this is JP Morgan Client Services. Hi, did I buy $15,000 of Delta Airlines? Yeah, sure. There's a $5 service fee. Well, that's fine. Okay, it's done. Thank you. <sighs> Beep boop. Hello? Hey, Lehman. Yeah? Want to write one too many zeros on a piece of paper? Sounds fucking lit, bro. All right. Oh, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> I'm on a mission to see what's the mission.
listen. My favorite song is on repeat, but it's just not helping me. My eyes have been wider, but never been brighter. Something else is going on. I need a reminder of how I feel this way. There's a fine line between living a life, feeling alive, and all times that I've been looking from the outside. And here I go again. It may be years against me, it's starting to affect me, and now I feel this way. There's a fine line between living a life, feeling alive, and all the times that I've been looking from the outside, and here I go again, following the eyes with the mind. That's probably one. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I hope you guys have had a wonderful day. Hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. Uh, I've seen some numbers coming out in the movie theater industry, and hey, it's doing well. We're getting to that goal. We got, what, two weeks left? Go ahead and grab it. Reach for the stars. Might as well do it. Got to put some space in between us here. That's exactly what we got to do. Bleach, Robert, how are you this evening? Awesome. Hey, that's always a good thing. I'm, just, I'm happy that Robert talked first. Bleach, how are you, my friend? Uh, don't let T's get out, man. He was over there playing Big Mill, man. All right? Oh, is T, do you and TZ having a, having a fight now? No. No, no, no. No, no you're just talking shit? Yeah. Yeah. What, what else is new? Hey, uh, Phil, drop down and come back up. I, I've been trying to get you up here. Got to get him up. Get him up. Get him up. Get him up. I have to, it would be nice to say hi to Phil. I haven't heard from him in a while. I hope he's feeling better. Well, yeah, man. They pumped him up, man. He's like vain, vain right now, man. Straight up. Well, you, you guys have the power, so go ahead. There you go. Hi, Teasy. Yo, you heard that, Teasy? He didn't even want to let you up. He said you guys got the power. I just had a, I just messaged him. I said, please let me up, James. He, he sent me one. Yeah, there you go. See? I'm, I'm a nice guy. Yeah, I can just remove him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Could you run a marathon? I sure most certainly can. Where's Gasparino? I'll do some pull-ups right now. Yeah. Man, Gasparino will slap you guys up. Man, Gasparino well, get folded real quick. I, I already know his weakness, but I ain't going to say nothing. Well, he's going to have to use a step-up ladder just to try and hit you, so it's okay. Exactly. It's not you guys. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. No, yeah. I, I think you got to reach on him, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be worried about that. 
I've done a lot of things when it comes to like, you know, just researching and looking at stuff, especially with how the interconnectivity between our markets to our banks, to the central banks, to everybody. So I want you guys, and I know I've referenced this a bunch, is that iceberg and how you have the tip of the iceberg is what you clearly can see. Okay, I have to go against this, this, and this. But it's always going down the iceberg. And how far does that thing go? And seeing what you're going to see and what I'm going to show you tonight is going to explain a lot of this and how the interconnectivity between the markets to our banks, to the world banks, central banks, so on and so forth, and how this web is connected all the way to the top. Go ahead, Leo. Are you saying it's all connected? Yes, it's like a big ass spider web. And you were just wondering, how the hell did he build a web that big? Well, yeah, how, how could they? How could they connect it all together? Well, Let's let me show you and we'll find out up above you have the little link so this way you guys can follow along and so without further ado AMC uh oh Bank of Japan made a boom boom to screw up the US bonds sound the alarm oh the Bank of Japan the venerable institution of financial stability has finally decided to join the interest rate party, fashionably late, as always. But after years of keeping the punch bowl filled with negative interest rates, they've hiked them up for the first time since 2007. Pop the champagne. Eh, maybe not. Because this could be more of a sobering moment for the world economy. Let's paint a picture. So of the Bank of Japan, their grand strategy. Imagine a group of people on a boat and the boat is taking on water. Instead of fixing the leak, they decide to bail out the water with cups, but not just any cups. These are special Bank of Japan cups that have holes in them. That's been the Bank of Japan's approach to monetary policy for the past few years. This chart is the comparison between the yen to USD and how it's still going up. So everybody in Japan's happy, but are they really happy? I don't think so. So now with a vote of seven to two, they decided to scrap the negative interest rate policy, setting the policy rate in a range between 0% to 0.1%. Board members Nakamura and Noguchi were, weren't on board with this, uh, dissenting like two people at a surprise party who didn't get the memo about the dress code. The Bank of Japan has been like a procrastinating student always saying they'll raise rates, but next week. Hoping for some economic miracle. They've been pushing the boundaries of what's considered ridiculous with statements that will make you wonder if they're running a central bank or a comedy club. For instance, two days ago, Yuda declared consumption is improving moderately on easing costs, push pressure, Hopes for higher wages. It's like saying, I'm on a diet. I only eat chocolate cake on days ending with Y. And let's not forget the Bank of Japan's governor, uh, Fukuri's classic. We want more data before a rate move. That's like saying, I'll start my diet after one last feast. As they shovel another spoonful of economic uncertainty. The Bank of Japan's reluctance 
to raise rates has been like a bus full of blindfolded economics or e economists with the Bank of Japan at the wheel driving towards a cliff and not just any cliff, but one where there's been throwing money off like confetti at a parade, hoping that the money turns into a safety net. The Bank of Japan's lose versus lose situation has been like a game of financial chicken where they've been swerving at the last second for years, but now they've run out of road and it's time to face the music or in this case, the interest rates. This chart here is based upon their GDP and basically what they can purchase or what they purchase and how that's moving along. As you can see, it's been negative for 12 months, minus three. It's absolutely ridiculous what they're doing to the people of Japan, but that's the way that these people function. That's the way that all these people in the economy think that, oh, hey, you know what? I'll just do a little bit different of the numbers. Let me just push this number up, pull this number back. You know, this might hurt this demographic of people, or it might hurt that demographic of people, but, you know, as long as it lines up our pockets, I think we're going to be okay. And that's how the game is played. It's not a matter of finding what's right or what's wrong. It's, or trying to fix it, it's how can we go ahead and work around the problem with telling a lie about it and then saying, oops, well, you guys will just bail us out with a bailout. So it's okay. No big deal. The irony is that on, on the day they wanted to tweak the yield curve control in a hawkish sign, they printed more yen than a counterfeit operation in overdrive. The yen shot back up above 150 versus the USD, faster than a cat video that goes viral. So what happens if the Bank of Japan starts care, caring about its own people and stops fueling the goal, global yen carry trade? Well, it's like pulling a pin on a grenade and hoping it's a dud. Spoiler alert, it's not. Despite downgrading their assessments of the consumer spending and production, the Bank of Japan moves, move comes as inflation makes its comeback tour in Japan. It's likely they finally noticed the elephant in the room, and it's wearing a t-shirt that says higher wages. Veteran, veteran market commentator John Authors puts it best. Waiting for Japan to raise rates has been like waiting for a plot twist in a reality TV show, but now the implications for carry traders in China are as real as the latest episode of Central Bankers Gone Wild. <laughs> What's this? An all-new sushi restaurant just opened in town. Try their lunch specials. Thanks. You can count on Postman Butters. Special delivery, man. Here you are, sir. Brand new sushi restaurant in town. A flyer for you from Postman Butters. Welcome to Shitty Walk. Can I take all the prize? Hello, sir. Postman Butters here with a special delivery for you. What are you talking about? It's a coupon for a brand new Asian restaurant that just opened up in town. A what? Let me see that. Oh, no, a sushi place. How come every time a hardworking Chinese man opens a business, some smelly Japanese dog has to come and try to invade him? Uh, I don't know. I'm just being paid to hand out flags. Where is this Japanese attire ball? How far from my shitty walk? Well, you mean there's a sushi restaurant? It's right over there. What? What? What the f***? Welcome to a city sushi. Can I take an order, please? 
What's the big idea of putting your shitty Susie right next to my shitty walk? I'm sorry, I do not understand your accent. You want the shitty tuna roll? No, I don't want shitty tuna roll. I want you to go find another shitty town to open your shitty Susie place. Why don't you please just speak in English? Maybe I can understand you. I am speaking English. Why don't you speak a f***ing English? You sober eating f***. Get out or I call police. Come on, kid. You don't want to eat this shitty sushi. It gives you worms. Better than a shitty Kung Pao chicken made from a cot. The Bank of Japan rate hike might just be the wake-up call the world stock market needed. It's a reminder that an era of cheap money might be coming to an end, and the future could hold more surprises than a plot twist in a soap opera. So investors, buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. And the Bank of Japan, welcome to the party, even if you're a decade or two late. So these charts that you see here are basically there's correlations between these charts the correlations that you're seeing is one alphabet and if you see the pattern of where it's going continuously dragging up if you go to the next one this is in regards to uh, uh usd same thing same pattern keeps on going up let's go to the next one this is the japanese yen spot trade look at that 17 cents from 150. It's the same damn game. They just put it on. They just put, here's the replay button. Here, let me just push this. Replay. So what happens if the Bank of Japan starts caring about its own people and stops fueling the global yen tra carry trade? Well, in the grander theater of global economics, the Bank of Japan has finally decided to stop being the world finance, financial mime. It makes some noise. After years of tiptoeing around the negative interest rates, they've taken a leap, a bit of tiny one, into positive territory. It's like watching a sloth run a marathon. You know it's making progress, but you're not sure if it's if it'll finish before the next ice age. Or the Bank of Japan's decision on putting a band-aid on a dam leak. Well, they've been warned, straw manded, leaked, and hinted at. Yet, they clung to their negative interest rates like the importance of sugar for Kool-Aid. But now, with a vote that was closer than the game of Jenga at family night, they nudged the policy rate into a range between 0% and 0.1%. It's not a giant leap for mankind, but hey, it's something, maybe, I don't know. But... The two dissenting policy board members, Nakamura and Noguchi, are like two kids in a class who didn't clap after the school play. They're not buying what the Bank of Japan is selling. Who can blame them? The Bank of Japan's track record of reckless action is longer than a CVS receipt. Let's talk about the Bank of Japan's excuses. They're like a procrastinator dream journal. Consumption is improving. Moderately, uh, they say a household spending charts perform a nosedive worthy of an Olympic diver. We want more data and a rate move. They claim as wage hikes in Japan make headlines louder than a, than a teenager's music. But when you see their, how they're going to try and fix the stuff with the monetary policy changes and all this other crap, you're going to, you're going to laugh. Tina, where are you going and why are you dressed like that? Well, Lois, I happen to be a Muslim now, which means I'll be spending a lot of my time in mostly empty cafes watching soccer on an eight inch black and white TV. Yes, the team I like is kicking it. Oh no, the team I don't like is kicking it. Yes, the team I like is kicking it again. I will celebrate with finger symbols. Hey, is that for real, that, that diarrhea-only sign on your bathroom? Peter, this is my friend Omar. He can teach you many things about our faith, including how to ululate. What's that? It's this. 
Oh, my God, that's terrifying. I don't know if I'm ready for that. No, Peter, it's okay. Just sing the beginning of La Bamba, but don't say the La Bamba part. Oh, okay. La, 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 yes, good la, job. La, You're la, doing la, it. Bamba. Ooh, so close. All right, Lois, I'm off to the bazaar. What do you mean? You mean the market? Yeah, the bazaar. Well, if you're going to the market, can you pick up some cereal, some butter, and a loaf of bread? I'll see what they have. All right, Lois, here's six cobras, a bolt of silk, and a ram's horn. Peter, what the hell? Hey, can you help me with the 20 paper bags of dates I got in the car? Why the hell would you get 20 bags of dates? The monkey in the little vest who was selling them happened to be very persuasive. <sighs> you know what? Fine. I'm just going to assume this will pass, like your everywhere is a racquetball court phase. So, Mike, now that you've thoroughly kicked my butt all over the court, what do you say we take one quick second to talk about the Wichita account? And let me assure you, my racquetball game is no indication of how we do business here at J.T. Stern. <laughs> okay, zero serving zero. I have to say, Peter, I am impressed by how much you have committed yourself to Islam. Are you kidding? It's awesome. I even started wearing leather sandals with way too long toenails. See how the big ones are getting yellow? Ah, yes, very Muslim. Listen, Peter, some friends of mine and I are getting together tonight, and we wanted to invite you to join us. O-M-A. I am so there. Whose crappy van shall we take? Actually, we are meeting here. Follow me. Oh, hey, you guys. Hey, is anyone going to object if I pick my nose with a dagger? Mahmoud, who is this man? Why would you bring him here? Do not worry. This is Peter. He believes in our cause. How can you be sure? Give him the test. Who is better, Hulk Hogan or the Iron Sheik? Um, the Iron Sheik? Okay, he is one of us. I told you, look at him. He's the perfect man to help us blow up the Quahog Bridge. <laughs> ah, oh my God, everybody down! So are these toys just like to take? Hey guys, what football team should I like? Mahmoud says we all need to act like we're fans of American football, so we seem less suspicious. What? What are you talking about? I'm talking about Mahmoud. You know, I actually feel really bad for him. You know he knew 19 guys who died on 9-11? I mean, what are the odds? Peter, I think you joined a terrorist sleeper cell. What? That's crazy. Look, I'm going to call Mahmoud right now on this cell phone he gave me. He'll tell you. Damn phone's busted. Maybe I dialed wrong. Peter, please stop trying to call Mahmoud. This is very serious. Your friends are terrorists. Think about it. They're, they're meeting in secret. They're creating cover stories. Oh, my God, you're right. See, I told you Mahmoud was bad news. Those guys are all bad news. Uh, hang on there, Quagmire. Just because these few guys are terrorists doesn't mean all Muslims are. Every ethnic group has their nut jobs. We have the Unabomber, Timothy McVeigh, and even that fat guy at the Atlanta Olympics who didn't do it, but he looked mean, so we said he did. Joe, you don't get to talk about the regular Olympics. Well, I gotta go down there right now and tell Mahmoud we can't be friends anymore. Wait a minute, Peter. This could actually be an opportunity. You're already in their group. They trust you. If you can find out what they're planning next, we might actually be able to stop an act of terror. You'd be a hero. Well, I, I could try. I mean, I am a pretty good actor. Remember how upset I seemed to get when Lois said she was leaving town with the kids for a few days? Oh, my God. I'm going to miss you guys so much. Don't forget to call and let me know exactly when you'll be back. Get out. Changes of monetary policy framework for March of 2024. A recent data of anecdotal information have gradually shown that the uh, virtuous cycle between wages and prices has become more solid. The bank judged it came in sight that the price stability target of 2% would be achieved in a sustainable and stable manner. Towards the end of the projection period of January of 2024, Outlook report, it considered that a large-scale monetary easing measure have fulfilled their roles, including the negative interest rate policy and the yield curve control. Absolute bullshit. But with the price stability target, the bank will conduct monetary policy as appropriate. 
guiding the short-term interest rate as a primary policy tool in response to the development of, in economic activity and prices, as well as financial conditions from the perspective of sustainable and stable achievement of the target. Given the current outlook for economic activity and prices, it anticipates that accommodative financial conditions will be maintained for the time being. So I'm going to give you the basic gist of this. So in other words, you have this chart on the left side, you have this chart on the right side. They're going to have purposely affect the long-term rates to make it look like they're better now. And so the so the Bank of Japan cannot continuously keep purchase repurchasing their bonds because the yen I guess is somewhat stable at 150 to the dollar and now they will continue to discontinue purchases on ETF and JREITS. So they're not going to buy EFTs anymore. And instead of repurchasing their bonds, they're basically going, that's how they're helping the U.S. government. Because if they keep on repurchasing their bonds, that means that the yen keeps on going higher. It is a, a clusterfuck of an event because now you're basically giving people the outlook that everything is okay, but yet your kids, your kids' kids are going to be in this economic turmoil for God knows how long. So they're not buying what the BOJ is selling and who can, who can honestly blame them? It has come to my attention that there is a Chinese among us. Rest assured, he will be found. Security is launching a full-scale investigation into the genealogy records of every single one of our employees. This man will be found, and there will be dire consequences. Too bad about that Chinese guy, huh? The Bank of Japan strategy has been like a driving, like driving a bus with no brakes down a hill in the fog, and now they've surprised, and now they are surprised because they've hit a tree. Bank of Japan's approach to monetary policy has been less like a calculated chess game and more like a toddler playing with the, econ uh, the economy's light switch. On, off, on, off, and surprise, the ball blew. They've been lounging in the lose versus lose situation where inaction became their default action and being struck being stuck in an elevator between floors and deciding to renovate it into a studio apartment then comes the hawkish hawkish tweak which was less of a policy adjustment and more of a policy pirouette leaving the yen doing the tango with itself if the yen is expected to deflate like a sad birthday balloon the Japanese rates are playing limbo with other developed bond markets. Then why wouldn't asset managers keep the carry party going? Well, the real conundrum seems to be how much yen the Bank of Japan can print without turning the currency into an origami paper. And if there is enough yen in the kiddie pool to keep the carry trade afloat, it's not rocket science. It's more like alchemy at this point. Got gold? So this chart to the left is the 10-year gold price in the Japanese yen per ounce. I think they got gold. I don't know where, but they got it. It's a lot, and that's what they're going to need to try and actually fix their problem. So what the Bank of Japan is trying to do is like using a water gun to fight a forest fire and then acting puzzled when they get steam 
Um, it's a spectacle that has market spectators rubbing their eyes, wondering if the witnessing strategic genius or just strategic juggling. The future of the world stock market is teetering on edge, and the Bank of Japan's next move, or lack thereof, might just flap the wings that triggered a financial hurricane. Will this be a masterstroke or a facepalm moment in economic history? Only time will spill the beans. Now, if the Bank of Japan started actually caring about its own people, stop the yen carry trade, it could be the financial equivalent to a mic drop. Stocks worldwide might react like a house of cards in a wind tunnel. Kaboom, indeed. The Bank of Japan moves, comes as inflation decides to crash Japan, uh, Japan's party after years of playing hide-and-seek. They finally no 